following is a paid program. The views expressed are not necessarily those of the management or ownership of Score North, KSTP AM 1500. This is the place to talk about everything related to the home. Buying or selling real estate, financing and improvements that can help increase your home's value. This is Minnesota Home Talk on Score North. Here's your host, Jason Walgrave. Here's Jeff O'Brien with Chestnut Cambro. Good morning, folks, and welcome back. This is Minnesota Home Talk. And we are live on Score North on 1500. We are the original real estate show here on AM 1500 Radio. We're live every Saturday morning, of course, on demand. Check out our website, on demand at minnesotahometalk.com. I'm your host, Jason Walgrave with Walgrave Real Estate Group and the Minnesota Real Estate Team at Remax Advantage Plus. We also have Mortgage Michael Overson. Says it right there, so you know it's yes, true. Look at that. Mortgage Mike is here. We've got Evan Little with Paragon. We've got, uh, he of course is our insurance guru, the uh, the master of insurance. Overson is the wizard of of uh, loans, or the the leprechaun of loans. <laughs> <laughs> the leprechaun of loans. <laughs> hey, yeah. what do you got, Trey there? Tyson, he's sneaking his... his uh, Nice round looking melon in there. Is that Trey? I think that's, that's Trey. Yeah, that's Trey Trey here. I got I got uh He's don't oh, don't oh. He's camera shy. <laughs> yeah, I got I got the two boys by myself. I figured there was no way in heck I was gonna make through the show without having to probably sneak away and, and do something here. So Good morning, yeah, so Trey. Good. How you doing, buddy? Hi. <laughs> love it. I love it. All right, folks, we got a big show planned this morning. We've got uh, market updates to do, of course. We'll go over some statistics. We've got smoking hot listings. We have, uh, so there's two things I'd like to go over. The first one is how homeowners can make the most of their yards, even in the winter. Of course, in the last couple of years through COVID, we've seen uh, a lot more time being spent at home, a lot of outdoor spaces being built out, and some really good ideas in this article. So we'll be going over that. And if we have time, uh, we'll also take a look at housing predictions or housing market predictions for 2022. So we got a big, big show planned. We've got four tickets to a Timberwolves game to give away for the best real estate question. Two ways you can win, folks. You can give us a call into the studio. The studio lines are open at 651 64 Seven two nine one zero. Call us here at the studio. These are the studio lines, and they're open right now. Give us a call with your real estate question, anything and everything real estate related. The best question during the show is going to win four tickets to the T Wolves game. Um, as uh, as most of us have seen the last few weeks, the T Wolves have been uh, kicking some butt and having uh, having a good time. They're winning lots, are playing really really well. So if you'd like to win four tickets to a T Wolves game. Four tickets to one big winner. Give us a call through real estate question. Phone lines are open. 651-647-2910 for free tickets to a Timberwolves game. All four seats are together. One big winner. Give us a call with your question to win Timberwolves tickets on us at 651. Studio lines are open at 651 647 2910. You can also win via text. Text your real estate questions to our text line, which is 763 443 5664. 763, our text line is 763 443 5664. Evan's got it scrolling across the bottom. I, I just love all this new technology. Speaking of technology, Overson is here doing the show, but he is not actually physically in the studio. Um, I know it's hard to believe, right? It is hard to believe. But I'm Evan got that off. My, I'm actually on my private island that I rented out for the week. <laughs> and this is just like the fake like home office background you can put in like Zoom meetings and stuff. You know how you can change the oh, background yeah. or whatever. Yeah, that's, that's what it looks cool. like. That's yeah, what I'm that on, is. <laughs> I'm on an island right now. Yeah. I, I would think if you were on an island, the background would be more tropical than, than what it is. But, you know, I get it. Hey, I if you just called in, like by the way. I lost you. Call back in. We're we're ready for you. Six five one six four seven two nine one zero. So you know, Evan, I said I want I wanted to make it look like I was up here in the miserable cold with you guys. You know what I mean? So I'm like, this is let's just make it look like my house in the background now, so they don't know I'm on an island. You know, 
working on my tan right now. Working. I mean, that's that sounds like some 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 COVID gamesmanship there, <laughs> where it's like, oh yeah, I'm working remote from home, guys, and you just re- replace your background with your own own office space, even though you're actually on vacation in Florida or something. Uh, yeah, hey, exactly. it works. It works. Speaking of uh, mortgage, Mike, mortgage, Mike. For uh, 2021, I just um, I, I learned of this information yesterday. Uh, Mike Overson, Mortgage Michael Overson with Luminate Home Loans, in 2021, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, finished the year number one loan officer in the United States for Luminate. Is is that is did I say that correctly? That is correct. Yeah, I did end up number one, number one in the country for all of Luminate. That that is that's really impressive, Mike. That excellent job. I we what's, certainly have seen the work you put in. What, what's the context here? How many loan officers did you beat out to be number one? Uh there's probably I bet there's probably eighty, eighty-five probably awesome. across the country. Wow, so, awesome. So that's that's great. Yeah. So, so my, it was it was good. One of the few loan officers that can actually say they closed more business in 2021 than 2020 because 2020 was right. It was the, refis. It was the refi rush. I mean, everyone, every loan officer had a record year in 2020 because of where rates went, and how many refis mm-hmm. got done. Um, 2021 still refis happening, but not as many. So a lot of people had record years in 2020. 21 uh, came down a little bit for most people. I actually closed more in 2021 than 2020, which that's wild. Which is pretty crazy i mean there's not too many loan officers out there that that could say that well and and it's it just shows that um you're i mean i think that your focus is definitely purchases um obviously you can do as as many refinances as as clients have requested but um you know for a mortgage uh business and mortgage team that that you own and run it it's you know it's focusing on the purchase business and helping out uh, buyers and and all of your your realtor partners. I mean, you work with a ton of real estate agents. Um, your team, Mike, you got a phenomenal team, and they just you know they're in every day. They're they're professional. They're focused. Um, you guys have incredible systems to make sure that loans um, get done and get done on time. And so um, uh, that's a big deal for us. You know, we when we're working with you, Mike, and you've got our buyer pre-approved. You know, if we're in a multiple offer situation. Uh, more times than not, when the agent on the listing side, the listing agent, you know, they see you and your team as attached to that buyer. It gives us a tremendous advantage, and and it happens many, many times throughout the year where that's the the reason why we win the multiple offer. You know, we've got a strong offer, we know how to write them, we know the negotiating tools, but then they see uh, Mike Overson and and your team on the lending side, and then they have all the confidence in the world that the loan's going to close on time. Yeah, and you know, purchases, I mean, that's the whole thing with purchases, right? There, there's a time component wow. to it. Refinances, there's not really. You don't have right. people with moving trucks lined up. You know what I mean? If you close a week past, it's no big deal, right? It's just, you know, they're already in their house and, and you don't have those moving parts. On a, on a purchase, everyone's scheduling their life around it. You got sellers scheduling their life around that, that closing date. You have buyers scheduling around that closing date. You have cable guys you know jim carrey cable guys coming in scheduling their stuff to get their cable tv put in and you know or satellite dish and yeah i said satellite dish if you're welcome. <laughs> you know, all that stuff so you have all these parties in their life around that closing date and if you don't hit that closing date everyone's got to reschedule their lives again so yep. but, uh closing on time is a huge deal we focus on that we're experts at it not just any mortgage team can can say that they've never really missed a purchase closing date outside of something crazy happening, right? right? Sure. Um, you know, so one of the one of the parties, you know, buyer or seller, you know, gets sick and can't make it to the closing. You know, right. situations like that. But I mean, I can't remember the last time we didn't close a purchase on time. To be honest with you. Yeah, you guys, you guys are best in the business. Do an excellent job, folks. We got the phone lines open. If you'd like to win four tickets to a Timberwolves game. Uh, give us a call. Studio lines are open. 651-647-2910 is the call number to the studio. 651-647-2910. Let's go to the phone lines. Is it uh, Tyrell? Good morning. Thanks for calling in. How can we help you? Uh, good morning. Thanks for taking my call. I was calling to ask, um, is it good to refinance uh, five years into uh, owning your first home? 
Um, Tyrell, it's a good question. It's a, it's a little, it's a little bit open, and we actually get this asked this question a lot. There's a bunch of wives' tales around refinancing, right? Oh, you shouldn't refinance unless you can save a full percent on your interest rate. You shouldn't refinance for a certain amount of time. Um, none of that is true, to be honest with you. Um, so here, here's an example. I've refinanced people after six months before, and and here's why. So when COVID hit, let's say you bought a house in in uh, January of uh, 2020 right? Interest rates were, let's say, three and a half at that point, right? Interest rates really good. Once COVID hit and we got to June, rates were at two and a half. So if you bought a house in January 2020 at three and a half, and in June of that same year, you could refinance down to two and a half, would you do it? Absolutely, you'd do it. Mm-hmm. All, all the old wives tales, if you will, would say, you, you don't refinance after six months, it makes no sense to do it. It's all about the numbers. So, um, so the, the time of refinancing, there is no, I should wait a certain amount of time or anything like that. The time to refinance is when the numbers make sense and work. So that's what you got to look at. For example, two, another example, um, let's say you bought an F, a house with an FHA loan that's got mortgage insurance on it five years ago, right? That mortgage insurance on an FHA loan will never fall off. So now if you can refinance out of that FHA loan and you have enough equity in your house now to refinance to a conventional loan and you can get rid of that mortgage insurance on that new conventional loan, absolutely makes Mm -hmm. sense all day. Even if your interest rate is not going down on that new conventional loan, you're still eliminating, you know, the mortgage insurance, which could be, I mean, on a $200,000 house, that mortgage insurance is $187 a month. Right. It yep. makes sense to refinance and knock out that PMI, even though you're at the same rate on the new loan. So yeah, yeah it's a huge difference. And and if you're knocking off that PMI, you know, yeah, your payment might be about the same, but you could take that extra hundred eighty dollars a month and start throwing it at the principal if you wanted to pay it down fast. Yeah. Or yeah. you can, you know, use it on other stuff. Yeah, a- absolutely. And five years ago. Uh, Tyrell, if you bought your home five years ago, I can I can tell you that ninety nine point nine percent of all purchases five years ago have twenty percent equity in in their home right now. Assuming that you didn't, uh, you know, do a refinance or a, or a second uh, line of credit in the meantime, because homes have appreciated, um, though they've appreciated more than twenty percent in the last five years. If you look at the Twin Cities metro market, um, so it might be a good opportunity. It, it, at least look at the numbers. What's your current interest rate? Oh, we lost. Him. Oh, we lost him. Oh, we did. Okay, so so that'd be another question. Um, but but like like Mike said, it's all about the numbers. Um, you just run it side by side. What's the current payment? What does all that include? What's the refinance payment? What does that all include? Uh, he'll ask you questions like you know when do you plan on selling? How long are you going to stay in the house? You can he can run numbers on um, how long it will take to recapture any refinancing costs uh, and just take a look at all the data. Yeah, I really have like six questions I can ask. And once I have those answers, I can pretty much tell you off the top of my head if it's going to make sense or not. I won't be able to calculate how much interest you're going to save and stuff like that, right? But I'm going to know, okay, based on your scenario now and where things are at now, more than likely, yes, it's going to make sense for your finance. We should have you fill out an app so I can go through and put all those numbers together. Or I'll be, no, it's definitely not going to make sense for your finance. Don't even don't even waste your time fill out on that because it's not going to make any sense for you. So, yep. And Tyrell was talking about a five-year period. And I think that it's pretty. Tyrell was talking about a five-year period, and I think it's pretty safe to say yeah. pretty much anywhere in the Twin Cities, you're, I, you've seen a huge gain huge, in principle. Yeah. Uh, you know, the, the market's been great. Yes. But yes. that also means that you've got some equity that you can use. Yes, you do. Hey, folks, we got the phone lines open. Uh, if you'd like to go to a Timberwolves game on us, we have four tickets, one big winner, four tickets to Timberwolves game for the best real estate question. Give us a call at 651 647 2910. That's the call and number to the studio. If you'd like to go to T Wolves game on us, uh, give us a call with a real estate question anything and everything real estate related phone lines are open at 651-647-2910 we've got the studio um lines open at 651-647-2910 give us a call to win tickets you can also win via text text your real estate questions to 763-443-5664 the text line is 763-443-5664. All right, should we do some smoking hot listings? 
Uh, give me one second to pull them up here. We'll have problem to talk with about, the technology. We'll talk about rates and the and the Fed, the Fed too, because I get a lot of questions today about, oh, we heard the Feds are raising rates. We got to hurry up. We got to do this. A lot of misconceptions around there. We're going to have to talk about that a little bit later in the show. Yes, we we'll talk about Fed rates. We want to talk about that now, Evan, or do you want to jump into that? No, we can do hot listings. I hot. just have to click on like eight things at once. So, <laughs> well. Good thing you're skilled. Uh, yeah, that's it. <laughs> Let's not oversell it. But, uh. All right, smoking hot listings this week, folks. We're going to start uh, in Savage, Minnesota. Pebble Creek Custom Homes is building in a development called Twin Ponds. Uh, they have uh, this lot is for sale. It's lot one, located at 14649 Sumner Avenue South in Savage, Prior Lake School District. That is the 719 Prior Lake Savage School District. This lot is on the market for $110,000. Uh, really nice size lot, 0.64 acres. Uh, so for more information about that, uh, we also have a to be built in that same development. Uh, this uh, is a Rambler, beautiful, beautiful Rambler. One of the, my favorite home designs um, that Pebble Creek has done in the last five years. Uh, beautiful Rambler. Uh, did you ever go to this house, Evan? Did you stop out at it in the wilds? Um, it's got a... Yeah, it is spectacular. Staircase for sure. It is really cool. There's a staircase behind the fireplace. Um, really neat design. Uh, this one is to be built on Sumner Avenue as well. On the market for nine hundred ninety-five thousand dollars. Four bedroom, three bathroom, three car garage, twenty-four hundred square foot foundation. Uh, Two thousand twenty-two built. Of course, this home is to be built. So if you're interested in uh, custom designing or building a home, this would be the opportunity to do so. Uh, moving over to Minneapolis, uh, we do have an offer accepted on this one. Uh, they have to review the HOA docs, but it is on Chicago Avenue. If uh, one bedroom, one bathroom, one car garage, 1979 built. <clears throat> this is a condo. <clears throat> Excuse me. There Jason's we go. Dying. There we go. Wide I got it back. Air. It's exciting stuff. 2022 <laughs> top radio content. Water. water. <laughs> uh, 752 square feet. Uh, this home, again, is located at 5545 Chicago Avenue. Number 205 on the market for $174,900. Uh, beautiful interior. Great floor plan. Uh, we have an investment, a commercial investment land opportunity in Dundas, Minnesota. This property is about six miles south of the Elko Newmarket exit. Right off of 35, uh, it has 130 acres, actually 130.6 to be exact, and we have um, I-35 frontage. So you've got uh, right on the interstate, zone commercial, a tremendous amount of opportunity for commercial development. This property is on the market for $5.2 million. Uh, In Pequot Lakes, Minnesota, folks, we've got um, a very unique property it is a converted church built in 1908, uh, 2,900 square feet total, located on Main Street, 4572 Main Street in Pequot Lakes, Minnesota. Uh, this property is on the market for $125,000. Uh, currently unoccupied, but this is a property that would uh, generate, uh, we're estimating somewhere between $1,250 and $1,400 a month in income, so it could be a great investment property or uh, owner use with some uh, really an open floor plan, a lot of possibilities. If this was closer, I would buy it. It's really cool. Honestly, it's really really it's cool. Really neat. Um, Pebble Creek Custom Homes has another development in Prior Lake that they are building. This is the uh, Cardinal Ridge development. Uh, they have it to be built, located at one six zero eight zero Sims Court Southeast. It is a five bedroom, five bathroom, three car garage, twenty twenty two built. 2,941 square feet above ground. Beautiful custom design. And this property is on the market for $950,000. In that development, we have lots that range from $165,000. I think that they start at $130,000. Let me pull up the other one. $135,000. So $135,000 to $175,000 is the price range on the lots. Folks, this development, um, it's really cool. It's a five-acre development, cul-de-sac. So all nine lots are a half acre plus. They're all walk out and it's surrounded by a 12 acre uh, park or preserve area. So you've got a really nice buffer between uh, your backyard and the next development. And that uh, will never be developed, the, the surrounding 12 acres. So opportunity to build in Pebble Creek or in Prior Lake with Pebble Creek Custom Homes. Check it out. Uh, let's see. We've got, oh, this is our, this is our really 
really cool property that we're very excited about. It's in Red Wing, Minnesota, Lake Pepin area. And this property has 425 feet of private shoreline. It is on a point. It is located at 27858 Greens Point Road. Uh, over an acre, it has a really cool pagoda-style home built in 1929. Uh, but this property is um, also, uh, there's opportunity there to redevelop as well. Spectacular property. Hard to believe that that's in Minnesota. The shoreline and the views and the land is um, really extraordinary, and that's on the market for $2 million. Our last smoking out listing of the week is another investment opportunity in Aiken, Minnesota. North Shores of Mille Lacs. This is called Docks Harbor. We have 32 RV sites, 26 boat slips, a lodge, and there is opportunity for expansion on this property. It sits on over four acres. Um, we've got a whole lot of shoreline and a whole lot of opportunity to uh, add additional boat slips. Uh, if you're interested in investment opportunity in Aiken, Minnesota, located at 39629 State Highway 18, Aiken, for $2.5 million, uh, come check it out. Folks, for more information about these smoking out listings, or if you'd like to surf the MLS, if you'd like to know what's on the market, go to our website, minnesotahometalk.com. We've got a lot of really cool features on there. Tons of reports on buying, selling, and investing in real estate, new construction, commercial real estate, financing, refinancing. Uh, all of our fantastic partners, REMAX Advantage Plus, Illuminate Home Loans, Pebble Creek Custom Homes, Bella Remodeling and Roofing, Todd Rooker, folks. If uh, if you have not tuned in to Todd Rooker's show, which is right after ours. You know, you know who assets. called in. Who's and that? is waiting to get on the show right now. We got Todd Rooker? We got Todd Rooker on the line. You know what? Let's put Todd Rooker on the phone. All right. Let's do it. Todd Rooker, you're driving. You're multitasking, driving into the show, calling into Minnesota Home Talk. Todd, I got your coffee ready. I hope you're not speeding. <laughs> I'm always speeding. <laughs> I, I, was, I was listening to you guys, and I thought it was... Uh, so interesting about the decreased uh, cost monthly with uh, refinance, lower interest rate. But the one thing that I thought that I might inject into this is the LOC, as we call it, lost opportunity cost. So for that discounted amount in a monthly payment, do not forget that if you decrease your payment by $100 per month, over the course of a 30-year loan, yes, you will save $36,000. However, because you're not paying that money, but in fact have that money, if you were to invest that and get a compounded return of 8% over that same 30-year period of time, you would have an additional $150,000 in that same 30 years. So when you add those two numbers together, you've got over $180,000 worth of cost when you decrease by $100 per month. That that is fascinating and incredible. It's an incredible opportunity. Um, wow, I didn't know the number was that big. Yeah, well, yeah, well, it's uh, it's kind of astounding. You know, now obviously that that assumes that the person actually is going to do something with the money. But we're always looking for leverage. We're always looking for ways to free up money to have more money to work with, aren't we? We are, and. Uh, you know, when you decrease a cost, it's not just the decrease that you no longer have to pay. It's also the amount of money that could be made with that with that same amount of money that you now have to work with. Yeah, yeah, it, it, it's it's a great point, Todd. I mean, Mike, I, I know you've done refinances over the years that that folks are saving, you know, five six hundred bucks a month. You know, so so take you know a six hundred dollar a month saving and and reinvesting it like Todd's talking about. Now you're talking about a million dollars, you know, and a million dollars in your bank that you wouldn't have had um, if you didn't do the refinance and you didn't reinvest that money. Fascinating. It is, isn't it? It is. And you know that you know the funny thing is when you work with people, uh, you know, folks fund their retirement accounts and they do that. But the number of consumers, frankly, who have a thousand dollars a month, five hundred dollars a month to to put away. It's almost non-existent. They they you know, and it doesn't matter that they may make very good uh, income in terms of their earned income. Whenever you can free up money that otherwise wasn't there, it really can be an astounding thing when you consider the the long-term cost or 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 in or income increase. Yep. 
Yep, I love it. I love it. Todd, you going to pop in here when you get in here? I'll be in get my coffee soon. <laughs> Thanks for the call in, Todd. We appreciate it. All so right. 100 bucks a month. So you save 100 bucks a month in your mortgage. You invest that. You have 185 grand at the end of 30 years. See how many jet skis you can buy with that 185 grand. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it's... it's um, the the ability to do something with that money that like Todd's talking about mm -hmm. it could be something as simple as reinvesting into you know the S and P five hundred or whatever or maybe that's freeing up that extra little bit of of debt to income ratio mm -hmm. and and everything to be able to buy that second property yeah. we had a, qu a text question from Chris in regards to that uh, he wants to buy a second home and rent it to his daughter his credit he says is uh, over seven hundred. Good income is it as simple as improving his debt to income ratio? What what are the factors for qualifying for that second property? Well, so a, a true second home is not a property you're going to rent out. A second home in the mortgage world is a home that you're going to buy and you're going to occupy yourself for a certain chunk of the year, right? Classic second home in Minnesota. I got my house here in the metro area. I'm going to go up north to Leech Lake. I'm going to buy a home on Leech Lake. And that's going to be my home on the weekends during the summer and stuff where I'm going to live there and I'm going to use it and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, he's talking about an investment property. If you're going to buy a property and you're going to uh, rent it out, that's an investment property. Right. And so the nice thing about qualifying for an investment property is that you can use the income from that property to help qualify. So mm -hmm. even if you're going to rent it to family, that's completely fine. You can use that rental income that you're going to get that property. You can use 75 percent of the gross. And you can use that 75% to help wash out the payment. So qualifying for that, that investment property um, is actually a little bit easier than qualifying for a true second home. Because mm -hmm. a true second home, you don't have any rental income to help offset it. On that investment property, you do have rental income to offset that payment on there. So yep. now on an investment property, you do have to have more down, right? So typically 20% down. Um, your interest rates are going to be a little higher. So you have those other factors that go along on a, an investment property. Um, but qualifying on the debt to income ratio side, um, it's actually easier because of that rental income you can use. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's a great idea. I, I mean, he's um, you know he's thinking about how to to build future wealth through real estate. Um, I think it's a it's a great question. There's there's opportunity there. You know, the other potential option is is to uh, be a co-signer and have his daughter buy the home. Yep. You know, and so if it's something that you know she's going to live in for a while. Um, our daughter Tania, and that's exactly what she did last July. Is is she, um, you know, about a year ago, uh, she came and said, "Hey, I'd, I'd be interested. You know, I, I want to buy a home." Well, actually, first she asked if I would buy her home, and I said, "And you no. just laughed." I just said, "No, <laughs> I won't." But I, but I, <laughs> joke of the day. But but I can show you how. And so we spent you know three four months building up her credit. She she got a seven twenty seven thirty credit score in a few months. She went to Mike. She got pre qualified. And approved for a mortgage with uh, with myself as a co-signer for the income, and in July she was able to buy a home um, with with me as a co-signer. But now she's a homeowner. She's got four roommates. Um, the roommates it, are paying her rent. Right. I mean, it's it's yeah. a wonderful situation, and and um, and there's great opportunity out there for folks to you know to help their their kids out um, uh, without you know just buying the place, but they can just be a part of the transaction and, and participate. So yep. um, it's a great opportunity. It's a, it's a great opportunity. It's a great learning experience for, yes. for your kid. And then on top of that, you can come up with a deal too. Maybe it's not just them buying the house, you know, you're co-signing and you say, well, as part of this, when you, when if let's say it's kid in college, like yep. Taya's, it's like, well, you're not going to keep this house after you graduate because you probably are going to move somewhere else rather than living on sure. the St. Thomas campus. And when you sell that house for all the effort we went through, uh, you will pay me X number of dollars from the sale of that house, $5,000, whatever. Yeah. You can absolutely go into those kinds of things. Uh, it, it also provides, from the insurance perspective, mm -hmm. an actual rental property. It's not hard to do, but it is more costly than a regular homeowner's because right. they just assume... Well, it's a rental property, and so yeah. we're charging extra because we know it's mm -hmm. going to be more wear and tear, right? Yep. Yep. Well, if you're co-signing on that and it's a house for your kid, then it's a regular homeowner's mm -hmm. policy. It's it's going to save you some money in that regard, 
And when they move on to the next home, it's going to be a lot simpler. Right. Absolutely. Great opportunities out there. Folks, if you'd like to go to a Timberwolves game on us, we're giving away four tickets this morning for the best real estate question. The phone lines are open to the studio. Give us a call at 651 647 29 one zero. The studio lines are open. Give us a call if you'd like to win four tickets to a T-Wolves game on us. Best questions going to win. Give us a call into the studio. Studio lines are open at 651-647-2910. You can also text your real estate question to our text line, which is 763-443-5664. 763-443-5664. Six six four. That is the text line. You can also win via text, um, folks. I want to talk a little bit about the market. We're going to talk about uh, the spring market. Spring market's here, folks. We we you know we usually say uh, first week in February. Uh, spring market this year was actually first week in January. Uh, I'll give you a great example because we get this question all the time. Um, has the market uh, slowed down? Is it is it less of a um, less of a seller's market than it was? And, and the answer to that is, I don't think so. Uh, an example I'll give you, uh, my team listed uh, a home last weekend. Uh, Steve on the team listed a home last weekend in Bloomington. And we had Saturday and Sunday, two days, we had 135 showings in two days and 27 offers on Monday. Oh, so... Oh. Uh, the market is very, very hot. A lot of buyers, and we've been talking about this for the last month, a lot of buyers um, have made the decision, I'm not going to wait until February or March uh, to start looking for a home. I'm going to look right now because hopefully I have less competition. Um, and so, folks, the market is here. Interest rates are still phenomenal. Um, if you're a seller, boy, we want to talk to you if you're a seller. If you're thinking about selling any time in the next Two years. I'd love to talk to you right now. Walk through your home. We can find out um, what things we need to do to get your house in the best position to uh, achieve the the highest sale price, and um, and what things to remodel or not remodel, and and um, what's going to be the biggest or best return on investment as far as reinvesting money into your home. So, if you're thinking about selling anytime in the next two years, I'd love to talk to you and meet with you now. Uh, go to our website minnesotahometalk.com to connect. Um, directly with uh, with me. All right, let's. I, I do want to finish up real quick the website stuff. Um, Overson is back. Okay, so Todd Rooker, uh, folks, if you go to minnesotahometalk.com, best way to connect with all of our fantastic partners. Um, it is. It has tons of reports on buying, selling, and investing in real estate. You can do home searches. You can s- uh, set up custom saved searches. So your your um, you get information when new listings hit the market. Uh, you'll know within about 15 minutes it's updated from the MLS. So it's a great resource. Free market analysis on your home or investment property. Uh, learn about our 72 sold program, how to sell your home in 72 hours for more than market value. This home I was, I was talking about in Bloomington, we ran that through the 72 sold program. And again, 135 showings in two days and 27 offers. Uh, we've got uh, Last Switch. Ryan Boyd was on the show uh, two weeks ago, did a phenomenal job. Nepsis, our uh, good friend Josh Big Biggie England, uh, Credit Life, uh, Jared Havens, he's coming on monthly now. And uh, he and Brian and the team do a wonderful job at Credit Life. Trademark title, Urban Landworks. We have home inspections with Neil Mullenberg, Spare Key. Uh, I was going to say Simplified Insurance Planners, but it is Paragon just Insurance Par- Group. Oh, Paragon Insurance Group. Yeah, that's what we're going. That's with. officially. That's yeah. that's the official. Yeah, simplif- simplified is uh, what it still says on my cards. Uh, so Paragon Insurance chest. Group, formerly known as Simplified well, Insurance Planners. We've we just- always been Paragon behind the scenes. <laughs> Paragon is, Insurance Group, is, no longer known as Simplified Insurance Planners. Uh, right? Well, so Simplified was just a, a sub brand that we used for our PNC lines. So, so can we say no longer known as? Um, no, nah, because I still have that email and I still have it on my card, <laughs> and I'm still responding to a lot of requests that All right. come through. My Simplified still has it on there. Yeah, Where you know, <laughs> it's. I just I'm not that worried about it. I know no. that John would be like, no, we've got to do all one thing. We're yeah, we're Paragon Insurance Group. Yes. Um, what I I think that I might do is just rebrand my card that says Simplified Insurance Process. Yes, there you go. Through the Paragon Insurance Group. Ah, I like it. And just cram the thing full of words. We got to get you a nice paragraph. Paragon shirt. 
So you can I like the simplified, simplified logo a lot more personally. I haven't seen the Paragon one. Paragon one is a a P. Yeah. With like um, some circles around it that um, are supposed to represent group of companies. Ah. Um, yeah. But yeah. Uh, mm. Not feeling the as simplified much. logo is really clean. <laughs> I really liked it, but that's fine. Then we've got uh, Sync Home Services, your home warranty company, EKJ Appraisals. Trend Home Staging. Melissa does an extraordinary job over at Trend Home Staging. She we follows. haven't had we haven't had Trend on in such a long time. We gotta have her on. She's yeah. been so busy. I mean, well, yeah, exactly. I so. I understand why. <laughs> uh. You know what? With our new technology, our Zoom technology, this really changes things. We can have uh, folks uh, zoom in during the show, and and I think uh, we can get some more. We can get some more guests. Yeah, yeah. Overson, you were a good uh, beta test this morning. Good job. Works from an island, so it I mean, it's good work from <laughs> their houses, you know, back in Minnesota there. <laughs> Sioux Falls Real Estate with Marcus Walgrave. We've got uh, Chestnut Cambrone. Jeff O'Brien does our legal minute. We should do we have a legal minute? We'll have to do one of those uh, today, maybe. Uh, Detail Home Services, Rock, Pain Free Patriots, Trust Vets, Riverland Bank. Steve Burrow does an excellent job on our commercial lending. Kepper's Plumbing, Home Media Innovations, William. Uh, we got to have William back on the show and talk about all the cool new tech stuff for your home coming out in 2022. Rental management guys, Scott Fisick and team, and then we have Lift Up. The uh, Lift Up team is these guys are going to come on soon as well. All right, folks, MinnesotaHomeTalk.com is the best way to get a hold of us. Connect with all of our fantastic partners and um, get a lot of free stuff, free reports on buying, selling, investing, free information about financing, refinancing. Uh, free market analysis. Would you like to know what your home's value is? And folks, when I'm talking about a free market analysis, that it will be done by one of the professional agents on my team. Um, it is not a it is not a quick computer generated report, but uh, we'll actually do it, and it will be very accurate. Sometimes it's a very very slow computer generated report. Yeah, it is, but accurate. <laughs> <laughs> All right, folks, we got the phone lines open. Would you like to win four tickets to a Timberwolves game? Give us a call at six five one six four seven. Two nine one zero. That is the call number to the studio. Studio lines are open at six five one six four seven two nine one zero. That is the studio line. Give us a call. Win four tickets to Timberwolves game. Best real estate question is going to win. You can also text your questions. We have a text line. Text your real estate questions is seven six three four four three five six six four seven six three. Text your questions to seven six three four four three. Five six six four to win four Speaking tickets of, to the Teals game. We've got a text, text question, question here. It's a two parter. Uh, number one: When should a family sell their residence with a ten thirty one type transaction? And number two: How often are houses sold on the closed envelope offer program? And is the selling price always higher? Um, okay, so let's start with the first one. My, my question would be: Is their their residential home? Um, if you're living in the property, there's no there's no need to utilize 1031 exchange. Uh, the reason that that investors and owners use 1031 is to um, is to not have the tax consequences of selling the capital gains. Yep. And so you sell the property. You have to identify within 45 days. You have to identify the property that you're going to buy and close on, and you have six months to close on it. Now you can you can identify. Four different properties. You don't. You can have, identify an unlimited number. To un, my understanding, unlimited number. Yeah. Um. You just have to close on one of them. The and you can you can close on more than one, but the total has to be at or greater than the property that you're selling. So, for example, you're selling a five hundred thousand dollar property. You have to buy one or more properties at total five hundred thousand or greater. But the point of a ten thirty one is you're taking an investment property and throwing it into another investment Correct. of some sort. That's exactly right. Yeah, so, if you're exchanging it for another investment property. If it's your primary residence, you don't have to worry about 1031. You, you don't have to worry about 1031. If you've lived there for two out of the last five years, uh, there's not capital gains uh, taxes, and that's up to $500,000 for a married couple. So um, that so I, I my question for them would be, are they living in the property? Um, what, was the last, what was the second question? Second question was, how often are houses sold on the closed envelope offer program, and is the selling price always higher? Uh, I, I think what they're talking about is instant offer programs or, or guaranteed offer programs. Um, I don't know what the stats are. I, I don't think it's very high. There's not many that are actually sold on that program. Um, there's more in the last year 
than than ever before. We as a team uh, sold more off market properties than ever before. But I think when we meet with people, uh, sellers in particular, we have a instant offer. We have a guaranteed offer program. So I I think. I think it's just a, a misnomer of how they phrased it. I think what they're actually talking about is like a sealed bid auction. Oh, that that doesn't happen very often. At uh, all. Yeah, I would say no. I would say that that's super rare. Um, yeah, I mean, we saw a lot of them during the the REO days when there's a lot of uh, bank properties for sale. Yeah, it's, when it, I, when I came back, that was more common. Yeah, but yeah, on, Not, on a regular home sale, it's. I can't even remember the last time I've seen it on a regular home sale. Th- there are some foreclosed properties out there that the banks are using this this type of uh, program to sell their home, but it's it's really uncommon, like way less than 1% of, of all transactions right now. And then uh, the, the last question. That was it. I oh, mean, it was is, the price. is the selling price higher in those sorts of situations? I, I, I'd say probably not. I think, I mean, honestly, the difference between that and a regular you know, a regular real estate transaction isn't that substantial. Right. I mean, you if you're going out and you're buying a house in today's market, if it's a home that's desirable, you know, it's it's move-in ready, you're probably in a multiple office offer scenario, in which yeah. case you're talking about a bidding war. I yeah. mean, you may be coming back and saying, you know, give us your highest and final, oh, we like that offer, but can you, you know, there's movement sure. in it. It's not a sealed one offer thing yeah. like it would be in this other scenario but you're still talking about something where there's competition it's there's not competition. it's not a slow process generally speaking homes will sell more if there is more buyers that want it if there's more competition right and so that that would be um, but that's not always what the sellers looking for you know we have sellers that come to us and they're and they're like Jason we just we want a quick sale um, we want a good price uh, we want it to be easy and quick. Uh, you know, do you have that that capability? And we do. We have instant offers and guaranteed offers, uh, and the, and so we have a program for that seller. Yep. Um, another seller may come in and say, "Look, I just want the most money possible." Well, if that's the case. We're going to implement our proven uh, marketing and advertising campaign to sell your home for the highest amount in the quickest time. And t- Tim did have a follow up on that. Correct. A sealed bid one happened in Moundsview earlier this week with over 100 offers. Oh wow! Yeah. Wow, that's uh, interesting. He said it was, was on the MLS, so that's a that's really interesting. Yep, it's not something that happens very frequently, as far as any of us are aware. I yeah, think. I, I'd love to look that one up. I'm I'm guessing it was a bank owned property because a few of the banks are are using the, the online bidding. Yep, um, you take a look at it, you submit your bid online, um, and it is it's kind of that sealed. I can see why that's mm-hmm. simpler for a bank to deal with because all they're really concerned about is getting the deal done and yep. whatever. So yep. it's just the numbers. Yeah. There's none of the letter writing and seeing who's local and any of that kind right. of stuff. Yeah, so. just the numbers. Great question. Folks, we got the phone lines open. If you would like to win Timberwolves tickets, we're giving away four tickets for the best real estate question. You can win by giving us a call at 651 647 Two nine one zero. That's the call and number of the studio. Studio lines are open. If you'd like to go to a T Wolves game on us, give us a call. Free T Wolves tickets for the best real estate question. Studio lines are open. Give us a call at six five one six four seven two nine one zero. That is the call and number of the studio. Six five one six four seven two nine one zero. We also have a text line. You can text your real estate questions to seven six three four four three five. 664. Text lines are open to win tickets. Four tickets to a T-Wolves game. Give us a call. The best question is going to win. The text line is 763-443-5664. Overson, let's talk about, you want to talk about Fed rates? Yeah. I actually, the we had the Feds. Here. Let's talk about the Feds here. I actually had another text question that came in that maybe we'll hit here. Um, so this text question says, if, if someone wants to get cash out of their home, would it make sense to do a HELOC first and then do a refinance to get normal refinance terms versus a cash out refinance, which has higher rates? Um, no, it wouldn't make sense to do that. So, and, and I literally just closed one yesterday that was uh, in a scenario like this. Whenever you add a second mortgage to the mix, rules change a little bit, right? The rule says if you have a first mortgage and a second mortgage on your house and you want to finance them both into one loan, if that second mortgage was not used to originally purchase the house, you have to run that refinance as a cash out refinance. Hmm. Even if you're not physically taking cash out, right? So I just want to take my 
$300,000 first mortgage and my $100,000 second mortgage. I want to roll them into one $400,000 loan. I don't want additional cash out or nothing. If that second mortgage was not used to purchase the house, we still have to run that as a cash out refinance. So you're going to get the cash out refinance rates, which uh, like our texter said here, are typically higher than a rate and term refinance. Are, is that the same with a line of credit, home equity line of credit? Same home line of credit, same thing. That's okay. a second mortgage. If, if you didn't use that home equity line of credit to originally purchase the house, then yes, you're going to get hit with cash out rates. Okay. Um, second part of the question, is there a certain minimum period of time that you have to have the HELOC in place? Not necessarily. We just kind of covered that. It's going to be cash out if you did not use the HELOC or second mortgage to purchase the house. If you did use it to purchase the house, which a lot of people did back in the day, they used a first mortgage and a second mortgage, right? Mm -hmm. And to, to avoid its jumbo financing, which has a different set of rules. I'm doing a lot of those now because the new conventional loan limit is 647,200. <laughs> That's people. a lot of room. Wait, wait, let's repeat that. What is the conventional loan limit right now? 647,200. Okay. That's so wild. You can get a $647,000 loan. You could put technically as little as 3% down. Typically, you're probably going to go up to 5% down at that point, but you can do as little as 3% down, which means you can buy a $675,000 house put 3% down and you got a $647,000 loan. Basically 20 grand down and you're buying a $650,000 house. Yeah. That's Crazy. incredible. We got um, the phone lines open. Oh, oh, sorry, Mike. Oh, sorry. That's okay. Um, okay. So that's it. So anyway, so as far as, as far as that goes, so there are, there are some rules around that and I, I see it all the time, but a lot of people, like I was talking about, use the first mortgage and the second mortgage to actually purchase the house. Right. Mm -hmm. So I did the first mortgage at 548. And then I did the second mortgage at 200. So now I could get into that higher price home. Um, right now, a lot of those people are combining both into one because of those higher loan limits. So a lot of opportunity there. If you do have a first and a second mortgage out there, look into combining them right now. It's a good time to do it because of these higher loan limits. Folks, we got the phone lines open at 651-647-2910. If you'd like to win Timberwolves tickets, four tickets on us for the best real estate question, give us a call. Studio lines are open at 651 651- Six four seven two nine one zero. Again, to call us here at the studio to win four tickets to Timberwolves game. The best question is going to win six five one six five one six four seven two nine one zero. The text line you can also win via text at seven six three four four three five six six four. Text your real estate questions to seven six three four four three five six six four. We got Nate on the phone. Nate, thanks for calling in. How can we help you? Um, my biggest question is um, I'm looking for a home right now, and uh, my fiance and I are debating whether to do a cash off or conventional financing, and which one would be better, um, which one has more risk uh, in regards to us as buyers. So you, you have the ability to pay cash for, for the home you want to purchase. Is that correct? Um, through our mortgage company, yes. Through through the mortgage company, yeah. Uh, so uh, explain that a little bit more. Um, basically, what is the mortgage company would uh, buy the home for us, and then um, according to our agent and our mortgage agent, they would kind of slip us in on closing. Okay. Is is that? Um, okay, I think I understand. So the mortgage company is is the buyer. Correct, yep. um, and so yep. that's why it's a cash offer because they have the, the the funds available, and then they're going to then sell it to you after the closing. Uh, yep, and, yep, yep. And then you'll do a mortgage. Um, okay, so that makes sense. So you, we're actually seeing we we've seen more and more of that in the last couple of years. So the advantages of it, uh, a cash offer, most of the time will be uh, a better offer than a financed one for a couple of reasons. One, because if it's a financed offer, it's contingent on the financing. So you have the appraisal, uh, you have um, the financing contingency. Most offers that are written with a financing contingency um, also have it in there that if the financing doesn't happen or if it falls through, uh, earnest money is returned to the to the buyer. So to answer your question, if you have the ability to to make an offer with cash, that is going to be a, a stronger offer. Um, 
a finance offer, if you're going to do financing, of course, you know, the more money you put down, the more desirable it is. Who your loan officer is, is so important on the, on the financing part of it. I mean, it, it is that, is that person and is that team, do they have a, a, a great reputation? Um, do they know how to get the loans closed? And so, um, but gen, but generally speaking, yes, a cash offer is, is going to trump a finance offer. If all, all other things about, about the offer are the same. All right, thanks. That, yeah. that actually helps a lot. Yep. Um, good thing with the loan officer is um, is my best friend's father, and um, he's he's known in here in Minnesota and Texas. So oh, fantastic! Yeah, uh, yeah, that that that's really great. No, you know what? Great question, and um, I tell you what, I um, appreciate the call in. All right, thank you. Thanks, Nate. Have a good weekend. You know, it is um, so. What we're seeing, um, there are a few mortgage companies out there that. This, this is their strategy. And so uh, the reason they're doing this is is to generate mortgage business, right? They have a, a large cash pool. They've got uh, a hedge fund typically that they're partnered with, and they're, they're using that cash to purchase properties. Uh, they then resell them to the buyer or their, their borrower. And, um, you know, the question would be is, how much does that cost the buyer, right? There, there's a cost to do business. Um, what do the rates look like? Um, but it is, um, it certainly is an interesting strategy for mortgage companies to, you know, to earn or gain business. I mean, uh, I don't know a ton about the topic, so maybe this is pure speculation. I assume it's just, you're paying more in closing costs, Mm -hmm. ultimately speaking. Uh, but on the other hand, the market that we're in, I mean, like specifically Minnesota, there's a lot of buyers that come here from say California Mm -hmm. where the liquidity that they have relative to our market situation coming from selling a house in right. like LA or whatever where they can actually do a true cash offer and if you want to be competitive maybe this is the best option for that yeah because then it's a ca- cash offer and a cash offer yeah um, even though one is actually financed on the back end it's your way of competing with someone who's moving here from LA and just happens to have you know 800 grand at the bank <laughs> well it, it, it's <laughs> it's fascinating to me uh, how many cash offers we've seen in the last couple of years. I mean, more more than any other year, um, certainly in, in my 20-year uh, career. And, you know, and there's a couple of reasons for that. Um, one, because, you know, there's a lot of equity in homes. There's more equity in, in real estate now than ever. Um, you've got the, the baby boomer generation that has more money than, than any other generation, and many of them are retiring and they have cash to, to make these purchases. But it, uh, it, it's fascinating. Um, a lot of t- what a lot of our clients will do is they will purchase the home cash because it gives them advantage in, in the offer if there's multiple offers specifically. Um, but most good uh, financial advisors will say, take advantage of the low interest rates. Yeah, the rates are so you know, cheap right now. Take out a mortgage. We can use your cash, and we can make more than the cost of that mortgage. And so, um, so a lot of times they'll buy it cash, and then they'll just do a loan after the fact. Well, and that's uh, that, when Todd called in. That's the same thing he's talking about: yes. opportunity cost. You know, what is that money doing for you in the house versus what is it doing for you somewhere else? Correct. Uh, Correct. You know, buying a house and owning it with you know like full cloth, no no mortgage on it is great. Yep. Uh, but if you're looking to grow your portfolio, there are definitely better things you can do with your money. Yes. And right now with interest rates hovering around sub four, uh, man, there's a lot of things you can do with that money to grow your portfolio. It, it, there is. And, and if you look at uh, the greatest generation, for example, my grandparents' generation, there was, um, I think that the majority of them believed uh no mortgage is good. You got to pay off your house as quickly as you can. Have no debt, um, and there there is a place for that um, for that philosophy. But uh, you know, I know Todd and myself and Evan, you and, and Mike. You know, we believe in the power of leverage. You know, and, and leveraging you know bank financing and opportunities that low interest rates can provide you. And so, um, you know, take a look at all of your options and, and take a look at you know the opportunities that, that may be out there. And of course, there's there's a lot of different approaches to this. Definitely. Uh, m- maybe maybe you are someone who really values the idea of I own my house, no one else has a stake in it. Yep. But m- maybe then the best option is not getting the biggest baddest house that you right. can afford with that money. It's to say, well, I have. I have five hundred thousand dollars in cash. Yeah. Instead of just buying a five hundred thousand dollar house and sinking all the money into this property, 
buy the two hundred fifty or three hundred thousand dollar home all cash. Yeah. You own it, but you've still got that chunk of portfolio money to be investing in other properties, to be investing yes. in you know stocks, bonds, dividends, etc. Yep. Because that way you're not you're not just putting your money into one thing. Correct. So. Correct. Folks, we got the phone lines open. Uh, time for maybe one more call. Uh, give us a call if you'd like to win four tickets to Timberwolves game. The phone lines are open at 651-647-2910. Studio lines are open. If you'd like to win four tickets to Timberwolves game, the best real estate question is going to win. Give us a call. 651-647-2910. The text line, you can text your questions to 763 443 Five six six four. That is the text line. Let's uh, send it back to Mortgage Mike Overson for uh, one last thought on the Fed's interest rates. Trey, you bring in memories back. I, I had my boys on the show about your age. Absolutely, yep. dude. Yep, he was a little shy there. It looks like he might be like might be wanting to get in there a little bit more. Here oh yeah. Go. So the Feds. So a lot of talk about the Feds. Feds are raising rates. We got to do something, right? Rates are going up. I got a lock. I got a lock. Um, the biggest misconception out there is that the Feds are talking about mortgage rates. They're not talking about mortgage rates. The feds do not have control over mortgage rates. What they do have control over are short-term rates, home equity lines of credit, auto loans, personal lines of credit, things like that. Short-term rates and long-term rates are uh, are inversely relational to each other. So when short-term rates go up, our mortgage rates, which is a long-term rate, will come down. Mm -hmm. So when the feds are gonna say they're gonna raise rates, and if they do raise rates, that's good for mortgages. Mortgage rates will actually go down if they do that. Okay. So uh, don't let the media tell you, oh, Fed's plan on hiking rates and everyone, the world's going to come to an end. That's good for <laughs> mortgages. Okay. That's good for mortgages. So don't uh, don't let that scare you. It, it's good for mortgages. And folks, you, you have to understand that mortgage interest rates are going to go up. They're going to go up. When I got in this business 20 years ago, the, the average 30-year fixed interest rate was 8 0.25 was eight and a quarter. Nobody blinked an eye, you know. And then for many, many years, it was in the sevens and sixes, and then the fives, and then we got below fives. And then people are like, "Oh, I got to have a four. And then we got into the threes, and you know. So this, this where we're at with the interest rates at in the threes is uh, very uncommon. It, it it's going to go up. Um, so take a look at the cost of waiting. We'll we'll do that on next week's show. Um, we'll talk about the cost of waiting. Uh, if interest rates go up and values continue to go up. Absolutely. Yeah. I would Here love you- to, you know, I, I hear this myth all the time and I've talked about it before. I think we should throw up the math on the cost, the actual cost of buying a house in 1990 versus now. You yeah. think your parents had it better as far as what they could afford yes. in what areas? Take a look I got news for you. And- you can afford to buy the exact same house on that same sort of income. Hey, folks, do you have a house that needs a lot of work? Are you ready to sell, but you think no one will buy because of the condition? Would you like to sell as is and close in as little as seven days? Give us a call. We have clients that are buying properties that need all levels of renovation. They are cash buyers looking to purchase right now. Give us a call or check us out online at minnesotahometalk.com. Folks, that's minnesotahometalk.com. Thanks for tuning in. Have a great week. has been a paid program. The views expressed are not necessarily those of the management or ownership of Score North, KSTP AM 1500. Score North on AM 1500 KSTP St. Paul, Minneapolis, 94.5 KSTP FM St. Paul HD2, and on scorenorth.com. He can lift a bus straight over his head. He can fly around the world in seconds, and he has the power to regenerate entire limbs. Okay, so Jason Walgrave isn't actually a superhero. But once you visit his website to find out what he knows about real estate,